Okay, appraisers, in this video we're going to be going over the prior transfer history settings uh, and all the different options you have within Spark for customizing that. Okay, so first you'll notice that down here in the bottom left, it's going to tell you how far back Spark is going to look for both your subject and your comps, uh, regarding how many months back it's going to look in order to determine whether a prior transfer is going to be included in the prior transfer history of that particular comp. So you can see it's looking back 36 months for your subject, 12 months for your comps. That's the standard setting. Those are the defaults. You can also just click this button and switch over to the alternate settings. And you'll notice that those are 36 months for the subject and 36 months for the comps. Again, these are the defaults for that, but it's all customizable. So I'm going to click on prior transfer history and show you. Now you can see the standard settings right here for the subject, right here for your comps, and then the alternates are here and here. And you may be wondering why do I need these alternate settings. So the reason we did that is because you may have one particular client that just wants to have things done differently. So let's say that client wants you to look back five years for prior transfers for both your subject and your comps. All you need to do is one time go into Spark, click on where it said prior transfer history down there in the bottom left, and change this alternate setting to 60 months to go back five years for your subject, 60 months for your comps, hit save changes, then take me back, and now you'll see that's reflected right here, and that's how far back Spark is now going to look. So now I can click on this magnifying glass, which by the way, that's how you look at the prior transfer history uh, that's going into your report for each comp. I'm going to click on that magnifying glass. It shows you in blue the current sale, it shows you with a green checkbox everything that Spark is loading into the prior transfer history. And then the others are just all the other transfers that Spark knows of uh, from public records. So you can see that it's looking back five years now. So previously, looking back just 12 months, it was only including this one. Now looking back five years, it automatically chose those two. And those are automatically going to be loaded into my report. It's going to show the date, the document number, the price, the buyer and seller, and what type of deed it was. And you can see that you can also just click on Next Comp. If you want to look at the transfer history for every, every comp, you just click that and look at all of them. And when you're done, you just click Done. Another thing you can do, though, is you can just click on the magnifying glass and choose one that you want to include. So let's say uh, I really want to include this sale. I don't know why. I just really want to include it. All you do is you click it or unclick it to include or exclude it. And Spark will automatically throw those now into my report since they're checked. When you're done, you hit Done. And then the same thing with these over here. So if I click on Comp 1 again, uh, this is what it's automatically loading in. But let's say for some reason I just don't want it to put in that transfer. I just click it to turn it off, hit Done, and I'm good to go. By the way, you will have a property report that goes into your digital work file that's going to have all the transfers, both the transfer history and the mortgage finance history for all these properties. So that's all a part of your work file, whether you check it or uncheck it, whether it's included or excluded, it's going to be a part of your actual work file. This is just merely telling Spark what to put into your actual report that you send off to your client. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.